Hey everybody, how's it going? I hope you're having a lovely day. Today I'd like to go and do a video that I've meant to do for almost a year now but haven't made the time for. In this video I'm going to go over why it is you should stop spending money on Amazon. I'm going to be saying this not as somebody who's judging you, but rather as somebody who himself, as ashamed as I am to admit it, has had an Amazon addiction. This usually comes up when I move, and I've moved recently from New York to New Hampshire, from New Hampshire to Round Rock, from Round Rock to Austin, and every time I find myself in a new apartment or a new place, I wind up buying a lot of things that I think would be good to have once I've settled into a place, and the ability to buy something at 7 p.m. and have it get delivered before 9 a.m. The next day causes me to make impulse purchases that I otherwise wouldn't make if I knew I had to wait for them or I had to actually go out to buy them. This is not necessarily the worst thing in the world, but when you combine it with the fact that the marketplace that I'm utilizing has a lot of products that are incredibly low quality, it becomes a serious issue. Back when I first started using Amazon, a lot of the products that would show up were products from major brand names that I could buy. And then when Prime came out, it just so happened that I could purchase these brand name quality products and get them quickly. As Amazon became more popular and more sellers started to migrate to the platform, what I noticed is that you saw less brand name selling on the platform and more of this random no-name kind of junk. I'm not the type of elitist that only buys high brand named items. I'm more than happy to buy something of quality, even if it's coming from somebody that doesn't have a large marketing budget. The problem here is that on Amazon across industries, whether I'm talking about electronics, kitchen accessories, or even some basics like crimps, what I'll find nowadays is that the items that I used to be able to find are no longer available and they have been replaced with garbage. So I'll give you one particular example over here. Let's say I'm on Amazon and I want to buy these butt style crimps that come with heat shrink to make them liquid resistant. The first thing that will show up on here, the first one is this sponsored result from some company, Kimio, Cameo, or something like that. And what you'll notice as you scroll is that you don't really find any real known brand name. You find a lot of no-name garbage that it, even if you, you know, continue scrolling, nobody is going to recognize who actually uses these on a regular basis. And uh, the problem is that when you click onto this product, when the first one you'll notice is that you have 313 reviews, and these 313 reviews are at 4.7 stars for this Kuin product, which denotes that the product you're getting is probably a very high quality one. Again, it's not just one or two reviews, 313 ratings, 4.7 stars. So let's go into and, and really kind of compare that to a product that's in the same field that you could buy at a local store. So here I have the Kuin set, and we are going to take one of the crimps out, and we are going to compare and contrast it to something that you can buy at, let's say, Home Depot. The reason that I will go to Amazon for these type of things in my moments of need is not because I don't want to pay the extra money to get something from Home Depot, but Home Depot has this weird problem where they'll say that it's actually in stock on the website, and then when you go to the store, you'll notice that all the packets are open and everything is stolen. I am here at my local Home Depot, and let's pretend that I wanted to pick up some of these. Uh, the bag is ripped open because somebody has stolen it. This is ripped open because somebody has stolen it. This is ripped open because somebody has stolen it. Uh, a lot of the items are that uh, the website says are in stock are unfortunately usually stolen. So as much as I would love to pick them up and happily pay a premium here over Amazon Garbage, the problem is that you very often can't get these little odds and ends because you show up and, well, people suck. I want to get this, but 95% of the time that I go to the Home Depot, it has been stolen and the people there don't actually pick up the phone when you want to ask if they have it there locally, in spite of the fact that it says they have 16 on their website in check. So it becomes kind of an inconvenient experience. So I got lazy and I made the problem of purchasing this from Amazon. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to demonstrate with a really high quality piece of wire and also a very high quality Klein Tools crimping tool, the difference between this Gardner product that's from Home Depot and this product that shows up number one on Amazon that has 4.7 stars with over 300 views. The type of reviews where you would expect that what you're getting is a fairly decent quality product. Okay, so I have the Home Depot Gardner Bentner connector over here. I was very lucky to find that there was one left at the store that wasn't actually stolen. And I have the eBay one over here. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my microfiber cleaning cloth and some 99% isopropyl alcohol over here. And what I do before actually putting any crimps is I clean off 
both sides so that I have a really nice clean connection. I don't want there to be any skin oil, any dirt, any dust, any junk. I want this to be the cleanest crimp that you can get. So any of the handling I do with the wire after that point, I make sure I'm touching the wire at the rubber section rather than touching it on the wire because I want my crimp to be as clean as can be since I'm never going to be going in there again. Uh, so I'm going to take this. This is a really high-end Klein tools crimping tool. This is not some cheap piece of crap. And I'm going to put it right into the yellow section, which is the yellow section for 12 to 10 gauge wire. Now I'm going to push on this end and I'm simultaneously going to push on this end up here to make sure that it is really pushed in there nicely and do my best to not crimp my skin because that would hurt a lot. And you'd probably get a good laugh out of it, but I would not. And then I'm going to crimp that side. And now we're going to go to the other side and also crimp that end. And I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. And again, uh, we're going all the way here. So just to give you an idea, like, rawr. That, that's not me doing any sort of fancy editing. I'm grabbing this until my thumb turns red uh, to, to really give you the idea that I'm grabbing this as hard as I can. Now, watch what happens when I pull on the wire. Three, two, one. These are garbage. Now, you may think, well, Lewis, you don't know how to crimp a wire. You're using the wrong crimping tool. Klein tools is not good. Klein tools is bad. I know that they're, they're not. They're, they're a good crimping tool. So now we're going to try to do the exact same thing again, but we're going to use uh, the proper tool. And also, since I know that this crimp is actually going to work, I'm going to put the heat shrink on that I, I need to have on here to finish the job and do it properly once that works. I'm just going to add this. I love, I love three to one liquid resistant heat shrink. It makes me very happy. Uh, if, when you use three to one liquid resistant heat shrink, the great thing about it is you re it really avoids you ever having to go back in and redo the wiring because of salt water or anything else. It's just, it's a gorgeous, it's a gorgeous thing. So got that heat shrink on there. I'm going to pull it back. A little bit more later. And again, clean the wire. Probably a little bit too obsessive with the whole cleaning the wire thing, but I like my connections to be as free of corrosion and junk as possible. Okay, so I'm going to take my wire and I'm going to take this red wire that I've cleaned and I'm going to put it in here, or have that attached, have my fuse holder. I'm going to put that in there. Uh, take my Klein tools crimping tool Put it in the yellow section for 12 to 10 gauge yellow crimps. Have that nice and pushed in there and it is all the way in. Push. And now we do the other side as well. And here, push. Okay, now. It doesn't come out because this product, unlike the product that comes from Amazon, is not a piece of garbage. And this is something that I have noticed across industry verticals. Whether we are talking about screen protectors, whether we are talking about kitchen equipment, whether we are talking about a, a dispenser for, for alcohol, virtually anything that you're looking at, what I've noticed over the years is that brand name products have been disappearing from Amazon, whereas these no-name brand products, to be clear, that are not even good, are the ones that fill up your results. If you are searching for this type of product, as you can see when I go over here, you're not going to find a Gardner Benton. You're not going to find a known brand that sells really good stuff. As as you scroll through, you'll find Plustool and Keyject and Kichuai, which 99% chance come from the same factory that don't know how to make a crimp. Now, Scott Galloway likes to talk about the fact that Amazon said that the branded era is over. And to some extent, I understand what he meant. What he meant is that if you could find reviews that you could trust for these types of products, you would no longer have to buy a product based on its brand name and reputation. You could simply see that this is rated well and this is not, and that would devalue major brands. I think that what he was not taking into consideration at the time was that many of the reviews that you'll find on Amazon are fake and bullshit and they're not representative of whether or not the product is actually good. There's two possibilities here. Behind door number one, most of these reviews are just fake and they've gamed the system. Behind door number two, most of the people that have rated this product are, are don't know that they need to pull on their crimp to make sure that it actually worked after it's done. And there are maybe 313 people out there, or I should say maybe, okay, 80% of that, that there are probably 
250 people out there, doing some quick math in my head, that have electrical crimps uh, that may have high resistance, high heat, that may go on fire because they bought a piece of garbage product. Regardless of whether these uh, reviews are here because they're all fake or because the demographic of people purchasing these products tend to be people that may not really be experts in them, one thing is for sure is that when you go to this website, the first product that's going to show up for many different, different product types are going to be no-name products that have really good reviews that are complete and utter garbage. Whether we're talking about crimps, whether we're talking about a quick release for a bike that is maybe lighter than a major brand that snaps when you're going over a bump or something like that, this can be very, very dangerous because these products have reputations that are not based on their actual quality. My theory as to why this is the case, it goes back to something I talked about in this channel about 11 years ago when I decided to stop selling on Amazon. So I stopped selling on Amazon because people would purchase the wrong product and then they would return it to me after destroying it. Back in the day, there were two different screens for an Acer 5517 laptop. You had the N156B3 LOB, which was a fluorescent backlit screen, and you had the N156B6 LOB, which is an LED backlit screen. This over here, is an N156B3 LOB. It has the connector in the upper right corner. This is a fluorescent backlit screen. This over here is an N156B6 LOB. This is an LED backlit screen and it had the connector in the lower left corner. This screen used to be $40 online, whereas this screen, since it was unavailable, was about $120 online at the time. So what people would do is they would search for Acer 5517 screen, ignore the actual text in the listing that said that there are two screens that go into this laptop. You have to buy the right one. Please make sure you check the picture. They would ignore all that and simply buy the device, which is cheaper, which is this one. The problem is that this would not fit their laptop because it's the wrong technology type and the connector is in the wrong place. So what they would do after that happened is they would try to you know, rip the thing apart to make it fit in their laptop, which is what this person tried to do here. What this person did is they contacted me on Friday after closing hours. They filed an A to Z claim on Friday night. Around Saturday, they escalated the claim. And on Sunday, Amazon approved it and gave them a full refund. Before I even had a chance to actually contact the customer or read the claim, because this happened all outside of standard business hours, they got a full refund for buying the wrong part, destroying that part trying to make it fit, and they were never held accountable. Uh, after a few months of this, I decided I'm exiting Amazon because this is a horrible marketplace. I'd rather sell on my own website where I have a higher caliber of customer, but more importantly, if a customer physically destroys something that I sent them, that I have the ability to tell them I'm not giving you your full refund. The type of people who are going to be okay dealing with this type of customer base in this type of environment are going to be the people that have less to offer. It's very similar to about 15 years ago when I lived in a really really, really rough area of New York. Not the apartment that I left when I moved, but it was a very, very rough area. When you would go to the corner store bodega, you would often hear somebody talking about how they wanted to, like, I don't know, kill the person that was working behind the counter because something went up in price five cents this week from last week. The people that opened in that area, on average, tended to be the type of shops that couldn't really make it in another area, but they did want to have a shop, so they would open a shop where other people didn't want to sell. And what I'm noticing with Amazon more and more as time goes on is that the people selling on Amazon are the type of people that sell products that fundamentally cannot compete in a proper marketplace. They are, they, again, they're selling the lowest end trash so that when people file fake claims, when they do fake returns, when Amazon decides to up the fee for merchants and everything else, when they have to pay for sponsored listings to get noticed, it doesn't matter because the, the amount of money their product costs is so low that they can afford to eat all of that. Whereas a company that makes quality products, since they're actually putting money into the product not being a piece of garbage, they can't afford to eat those costs of when customers destroy their products because they bought the wrong one and the vendor allows them to get away with it. But more importantly, because they make products that don't suck, they don't have to deal with these bottom of the barrel marketplaces. And uh, what I am seeing more and more is I'm noticing more and more major brands that seem to be opting out of selling their products on Amazon altogether because they're realizing our products are good quality. We don't have to deal with this. We don't have to deal with this race to the bottom. We don't have to deal with Amazon controlling every aspect of our sales experience. We, do, like, we actually sell something that's good. And the people that are staying in many cases are the people that are selling things that are bad. 
the point I want to make with this video, because you may be wondering, Lewis, you're literally just going over one type of product. You're going over literally this, just this. And you're right. I am only going over one type of product. I wish that I had recorded every single time that I had purchased a kitchen product, every single time that I had purchased a dispenser, every single time I had purchased some of the most basic items that with 3,000, 4.9 stars managed to not just be an item that's low quality, but be an item that barely even functions or does what it's supposed to, and just stared at this wondering, how in God's name do you have 4.9 stars with one or 2,000 reviews? Uh, and in my opinion, the reason that this is the case is because there is a serious problem with fake reviews on Amazon. And it doesn't look like a problem that they're interested in solving because they're continuing to make money off of peddling this type of garbage. And it's one thing if you're selling a phone screen protector or, you know, a, some, or a cup or something like that. But when you're selling a product like this, again, how many electrical crimps are out there that are complete and utter garbage because somebody actually bought that and thought it was okay. And what I'm hoping to get across with this video is that instead of purchasing no-name crap on Amazon simply because it has good reviews, that you try the product a little bit, you know, you not knock on wood a little bit before you actually decide to use it, really inspect it well, and return everything to that website that doesn't work properly. I used to assume because I bought something that was five or six dollars that it literally wasn't worth my time to print a return label if it was crap. The problem with that line of thinking is that these types of companies are relying on you to have that type of thinking so that they can continue to peddle garbage that doesn't work or that may actually set things on fire. Which is why, even if it actually costs me more of my time to return the product than it does to throw it away, I still return it just so there's a pain point for Amazon, just so there's a pain point for the seller so that they stop doing this. Across all industry verticals that I've dealt with, I've noticed the same quality problem, which is why today is the day that I am breaking my shameful Amazon addiction. I'm no longer buying these products of convenience from there. I don't care if it means I have to go to five different Home Depots to find the one Home Depot where they didn't steal every single butt connector and every single bolt that I need. I don't care if it means that I have to wait 11 days for shipping rather than one. I don't care if it means I have to pay an additional $3. It's okay with me so that I know that I'm getting a product that is not complete and utter garbage. Consider not spending your money on Amazon until this problem is solved. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. When's the last time that you purchased a product on Amazon that had 4.8 or 4.9 stars with a, you know, 200, 400, 3,000 reviews that was complete and utter crap when you received it? And when I say complete, I don't even mean like, oh, it's not the quality I wanted. I mean it was an item that was functionally unusable for its purpose. Uh, and where the item was also so cheap that it literally didn't make sense for you to print out a label, drive 15 minutes to the post office or whatever, and wait in line to return it when you could literally just throw it away. Many of these vendors, I think, are relying on the fact that the product is so cheap you can literally throw it away or that they can just refund you if you leave a bad review. And I don't think that we should let them win. Don't, don't let that win. Make sure that you leave a one star every time that happens, but more importantly, make sure even if it takes you extra time, send it back. Make sure there's a pain point for Amazon. Make sure there's a pain point for that merchant so that they can stop selling this crap altogether. That's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something. I'll see you in the next video. Bye now.